Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Gravity Shed. Today's video is going to be on how to climb Mont Blanc via the Guter route for beginners. Enjoy. <music> If you're looking to climb Mont Blanc and get to that wonderful peak, the highest peak in Western Europe, you don't want to be yomping from the valley floor. You might as well just be yomping through any woodland in North Wales. First thing you need to do is get to La Houche or La Houches and get on the Bellevue cable car. From there, you're going to look over the grass valley, over the ski piece, over to the railway track. This is an old school rack and pinion railway that's going to take you up to the gal. Once you get off the train and leave all the tourists and cities behind, you're going to be looking at a couple of hours walk up some fairly rough, rocky terrain. So essentially for this section, you could almost be walking up the pig track and we're heading up into the, uh, up into the sun essentially there where the Gutierrez Refuge sits like a James Bond villain's hut. I like Gutierrez! Hello, bonjour. Bonjour. So coming up to the Tet Roos hut, you're going to cross here past the bottom of the glacier. It's ice but it's very gritty. The decision of whether, whether to wear crampons or not is a personal one. To be fair, yeah, you probably don't need them. So once you pass the glacier, you're going to carry on climbing up past the Tet Roos hut, uh, the refuge. From here you're going to meet the Grand Colour. Now the Grand Colour is constantly dropping rocks where the glacier just peaks over the top of the Guter Ridge. Yeah, there's a hell of a lot coming now, lads. Well, yeah, we're relatively safe now, but you see where them wires are there? That's where Rob was when he got hit by the rock. We were creep, we were peeking around that corner, watching Breckel run across when Rob got hit by a rock. So it's no guarantee what you say. Rock coming, Rob! You move now, I'll keep an eye, then when you stop, you can keep an eye. There have been a lot of fatalities here over the years, so absolute care is required. Just keep your eye out and keep communicating with the rest of your team. You're fast! Oh yeah! Yeah! Yeah, you can see them tumbling down. Yeah, loads, lads, loads, get in! Still coming, lads. Go on, you guys do it, do it! Right, Rob, I'm moving to your position, mate. Yeah, of course. Stay there, Breckle, mate. Yeah, we can see him bouncing. The rocks that are falling down here range from sizes between golf ball all the way up to like football size and they come in flurries you know you might wait 30 40 seconds without any and then all of a sudden it'll just start raining down again now if one of these hits you um you know it could kill you at the very least send you to hospital once you're fairly certain that you're going to be safe it's a case of run forest run hey boys how's it going Go, go. Nice. Very nice, yeah. Right, oh. well, let's get away from where we got hit last time. From here, all the way up to the Guta Refuge, you're looking at a kind of grade one scramble territory. Now, I liken it to Triffin Northridge. If you can comfortably do Triffin Northridge, you should be okay with the technicality of this, although it's a little bit longer. It's gonna take you roughly two hours, maybe a little bit more. Now, on the harder sections, there is, or there are fixed wires in place for you to climb up just to aid life and make it a bit easier. Care needs to be taken on the upper sections of this ridge because it's often snowy and icy and at this point you probably won't have your crampons on so uh, just be mindful of your foot and, and uh, remember the basic rules. If it's green like grass you're going on your ass. if it's brown you're going down, if it's grey you'll be okay, if it's white you're in the shite. So as you're getting towards the refuge, 
you are going to find um, fixed wires in place. You know, if you feel very insecure, you can put your harness on a cow still into them. If not, set a leather palm gloves and just run and drag your way up. After an hour or two of scrambling up some lovely kind of grade one terrain, you're going to top out up some metal ladders onto the old Guta refuge, which is no longer used. Um, take a minute to get a deep breath, have a look at the view, get your crampons on before attacking the first alpine snowy ridge of your journey. Oh, now we're talking, eh? Yeah, now we're alpine army mate. Yeah. So there's that way up there, look. Just that route, and there's a down to the yeah. So there's Mont Blanc to tackle, and then Mont Maudit is up where them spikes are, but then Mont Blanc is like fucking up here. Before you know it, the first half of your journey is over, you've reached the Guta Refuge, which actually looks, as I say, like some kind of real cool futuristic building. Now, you'll be hoping for a good night's sleep. This might be difficult, especially if you're not properly acclimatised to the altitude. The food here is good, uh, although it is expensive. You're going to be looking at like eight euros for a bottle of water, but you know what? Just enjoy your time. Stay tuned for part two, where we go from the refuge at three o'clock in the morning to hit the peak of Mont Blanc. Enjoy.